Panaloids, this is Jeremiah. Panaloids, it's Dimitri. Panaloids, this is Kyle. So something that I was never really sure of, are we Panaloids or are they Panaloids? The talkers, are we Panaloids? The listeners, are they Panaloids? I know what you mean. Kind of like when you like name your fans. Doesn't Nicki Minaj call them like Barbies? Yeah, and Barbie. like Slipknot calls them maggots and like stuff like that. So to answer your question, no. no <laughs> I guess we are Panaloids. For a little history lesson, we were Modern Age Comics, but the guy wouldn't sell me the dot com that owned it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do one better on you. And I'm going to listen to this stupid Google article I found, which said have a unique name for searching purposes. Well, that's great. You can search us all you want. Too bad nobody knows what our name is. To go back to that history lesson, I found the name for our fans then because it was a name that you were going to use but you didn't so we are panaloids and they are the gutter mob i was gonna use that name yes because the gutter is what the space between panels is actually called i did not know that that was called a gutter kato why don't you remember this drugs <laughs> so we're gonna talk about she haw specifically episode three which i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed the series is off to a kick-ass start i believe in the last episode when you guys were discussing it you'd say on pace with wandavision i think wandavision in my opinion is the strongest disney plus show followed closely by loki followed closely by hawkeye and this is right up there with all three of them it is more superior than falcon and winter soldier in my opinion just because it's more entertaining but yeah episode three was dope where is titania where is titania well, she's in jail so to jump ahead here i have a sneaking suspicion that uh, when titania gets out of wherever she is the wrecking crew is actually going to become like a big deal she's going to teach these hmm. motherfuckers how to use these enchanted weapons that is my guess because the wrecking crew we got in the show bulldozer pile driver thunderball and the wrecker got wrecked it wasn't even close they clearly did not know how to use their weapons effectively also pile driver with the enchanted helmet. Yeah, he was silly. Definitely a nice little Easter egg for those paying attention. He actually called Thunderball Thunderball, which was cool. We're trying to get her blood. I think it is now going around the circles of supervillains. That's how she became a Hulk is because of Hulk blood. I have a feeling that that's going to be a thing and will eventually lead to what was announced earlier this week, which you said was not going to be happening. Red Hulk appearing in Cap 4. Where did you see that? Because you texted that to me and I was like, oh man, he just spoiled She-Hulk episode 3. And then I watched it and I was like, no. Oh, he got it from somewhere else. And you're not the king of leaks, Pierre is. So where did you see this factual information? I believe I saw it on comicbook.com. But yes, I am not the king of leaks. Pierre can have that crown. I don't need that crown. But it makes a lot of sense with the scene we got in She-Hulk, if that becomes a thing. I agreed that I did not think we'd get a Red Hulk because of the actor who played Thunderbolt Ross, him mm -hmm. passing away. I thought would put a nix on Red Hulk. We're not going to get Red Hulk. But now I think a Red Hulk will come of some sort of Hulk blood or abomination blood or something along those lines. Edward Norton as Red Hulk. No, don't do Ed that. Edward, Edward Norton. Don't put that Red out. Hulk. That would be so odd. He's the best one to do it. Yeah, but that's like, I'm going to recast you and then I'm going to bring you back as a side character. Because he lost his job. He lost what? his job. And now we're giving him another one. No, it would be too odd. <laughs> it's not like a reboot. Devil's Advocate. Evan Peters coming back as Quicksilver was a good pop. So like Edward Norton showing up in another Marvel movie and we all think it's a nod to past Hulk and then he turns out to be Rolf. Just saying that'd be dope. But what I would want is him to be Rick Jones. Mm. I would want him to be Rick Jones and instead of becoming a bomb, he becomes Red Hulk. I don't hate that as much, but I still don't yeah. like it. Does anyone remember the Hulk cartoon? I believe it was more geared towards a younger audience, more so than like the Avengers cartoon that was on Disney XD. Do not and remember this at all. I think it was like Hulk, Red Hulk, Abomination, and She-Hulk. I think that was a team. I think it was literally called the Hulk Smash. Hulk and the Agents of Smash. Hulk and the Agents of Smash, yes. I did like that show. And 69% of audience liked it. Nice. 52 um, yeah. fucking episodes? Holy shit. Going back to the Wrecking Crew, do you think their weapons are going to give them the god powers like they have in the comics? I think the way that it was explained away is the reason why they were enchanted is because they're as guardian. Yeah, potentially they could, and I think that'd be a really cool thing. Maybe Titania is the one who activates them. I know it hasn't been said that Titania is as guardian, but I think she's going to turn out to be as guardian. Supposed to be? I don't know if she's supposed to be, but it'd be the easiest line to draw. I mean, poor Porcupine Man is showing up in this fucking show. 
super stoked gonna... about it. Don't get me wrong. I'm beyond excited to see Porcupine Man, but they don't need to have to explain something else. I mean, I think Frogman or any of the other D-list, E-list, G-list villains that we will be seeing, they're all going to explain them away as quickly as possible and as easy as possible just to be the punchline. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's going to be in Thunderbolt. That's been confirmed. Titania is here to stay, so I think the easiest way is she's as Guardian. That's my guess. I did love the fourth wall break when they're talking, when she's talking about a cameo every episode. Now we uh-huh. see it in the trailer. It was so good to see it in there. We've heard most of them so far. Yeah. I definitely think the cameos and the fourth wall breaks have been some of the best parts of the show. You want to know what the worst part was? was worst You're part, complaining man. about a specific CGI moment. Specific scene. And I know people have been bashing it, but it does deserve to get bashed a little bit. It was so unnatural, the movement of the CGI. And all it was was her walking into her office. I understand it's not a scene that you put all of your manpower on, but they could have just cut that. It was bad. It was like The Sims. I can't wait for her to show up in a big budget movie to just shut fucking people up about the CGI. I agree, maybe that scene wasn't great, but the CGI well, why was is that not scene worse. You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. Like, it was fine everywhere else. It was fine for the after credit scene, but why was all of the effort just dropped on that moment? Probably because it was something that was very minute and they didn't think they needed to put as much effort into it. We had a CGI twerk off. I'd rather that be done better than her walking into a room. Let her walk in as a human then. Like, why are you forcing CGI when it's unnecessary? Look at the transformation that Blonsky made into Abomination. Granted, he was Abomination for all of like 15 seconds, but it was mm. beautiful. He yeah. was gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. There's the extra effort. Yeah. She walked into a room slightly weird. In a three second scene, you could have blinked and missed it. People want to bitch about the CGI, but one of the things that they don't realize, or at least I don't know if anyone's given the rest of the cast credit, when she's She-Hulk walking around and people are talking up to her, they're mm. doing it so naturally. Granted, they're probably looking at a fucking tennis ball, but yeah. They do such a great job of it being like a natural eye line oh, yeah. to where she is. It'd be cool if she was on like stilts. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I hope there's some behind the scenes about it. Speaking of all the TikTok haters, it is kind of funny that they called them out before they knew they even existed. So when they're going through like the news feed kind of thing, mm-hmm. just like random shit. But like one of the guys is like, I get it that there could be like a female superhero, but why does she have to like be a Hulk? Like, why can't she be her own superhero? There was a few of those. You called it out before it happened and it's happening and I'm sure people are saying that shit and haven't even watched the show like they're being made fun of and they don't even know they're being made fun of because it was that expected I do not know of that shape-shifting elf in comics and that's one of the things that I love about the show is it is going to use some very obscure characters where you can go back and dig and find these characters watch I say all that it turns out she's not I liked that character and the fact that she actually got in trouble for impersonating the judge and then the fourth wall break of the main plot with the side plot that was perfect it's only going to be crazier from here we are building to it being a climactic humor action off essentially when she finally gets in her jumpsuit we know that's coming we know daredevil's coming we know there's going to be a d-list villains anonymous surround table we know there's going to be speed dating with she hulk that's going to be fucking hilarious we know great things are coming and it's been great so far dimitri who's your favorite character I like the paralegal. That's my favorite character. Wrong yeah. answer. Is Meg the Stallion? The correct answer is Pug. Who's that? He's the other lawyer. He is played by Josh Segara. And Josh Segara is best known for his role in Arrow, a villain on the CW, to a supporting character in She-Hulk on Disney+. Plus. Make him a scroll and oh. probably kill him off. Oh, a secret invasion. Look at Dimitri with speculation. Oh, <laughs> All you do is want scrolls. What if her paralegal's a scroll? I doubt it, because then she'd really have no friends. Yeah, true. But like she was sent to keep an eye on her after the fact interesting oh there was one easter egg let's see if you know so her origin hulk had to give her blood she needed a blood transfusion but why did she need a blood transfusion i believe she was going against the mob in court i don't know if you caught it when she was leaving the prison paparazzi said to her is it true that you were involved in a mob hit gone wrong oh i completely spaced on that so i actually caught that once so i'm proud of myself although i didn't know if it was an easter egg because i'm like it has to be related especially comics around that time when she hulk came out which the unfortunate slash fortunate thing is she hulk was only ever made to secure the license to the word she hulk so when by 
Bionic Man, Steve Austin, the $6 million man, the TV show debuted. Another company just came out with Bionic Woman. And everyone's like, you could just do that? And so that's why Ms. Marvel became a thing. That's why She-Hulk became a thing. That's why Patsy Walker became the cat for four issues unfortunately. So the reason legally this was possible is because when the Hulk show was going on, yes, all of that was happening. And they were like, oh, we're just going to make a female spinoff. Well, Stan Lee got wind of it. And he was like, the fuck you're not before I get an <laughs> issue one out in like a month, had her first appearance. And he legally owned the rights because of that, because he knew he could get a comic out before they could get a show out. Yeah. A straight TikTok Easter egg. Oh boy. So it's probably oh. not a real Easter egg. Go on. In the scene when she gets named, when they're interviewing someone that's street and they were like she was like a hulk and like she looked good and the news guy goes that she hulk apparently the guy who he was interviewing is the same guy from the 2008 hulk movie who said it was like a hulk okay i think you sent me that tiktok i mean that's just good casting could you imagine having an agent and then your big break is you were in the universal hulk movie with right. edward norton for two seconds you've got nothing you haven't got a commercial and she calls you back do you want to be in another marvel project <laughs> could you imagine imagine you saw the trivia i made for the comic-con coming up right yeah i'm an asshole <laughs> Yeah, I got through like half of it. And I was like, who's going to know some of this? One of my favorite past trivia questions was how much is a cab fare in Metropolis? Who would know that though? For three years, it was a running gag in Superman that it was $6.50 every time. So that's where it comes from. Some of the really obscure stuff, I just find it fun because then you can inform them, give them the history behind it. Have you looked at the artist alley for New York? It looks ridiculous. I am jealous, but I'll be at Baltimore. It's just funny how they casually bump that list up it is a very long and big list and i'm trying not to go crazy peach like, is gonna be the busiest i feel from just looking at that list very quickly peach is gonna be the busiest and if you've ever wanted scott now's the time to get snyder like have a conversation with him versus him being tucked behind a wall for the whole con That'd be on a podcast you can ask him i mean i'm gonna have to put a microphone in bendis's face <laughs> So should we talk about that for a second? We got press badges to New York. We got press badges to Baltimore. So the New York contingent will be Kyle and Dimitri and the Baltimore contingent will be me and my really good friend, Jason, basically just going to be a videographer for me. And it's going to be a great time. I've already got a list of people that I'll be shoving a microphone in the face of. I suggest you get a list of people together for your guys' contingent. I'm going to mail you a care package when we get back from New York for some preparation purposes for you to go to Baltimore. This you, care package? You got half of it. Half some promotional of it? item. Well, you know. There's a few people in Baltimore that aren't going to be in New York, and I need a few things graded. Yeah. She's saying, yeah, because he might be sending you some Bendis stuff. The main goal for me for Baltimore is to get five yeah. interviews and to get an Alan David remark of Miracle Man. That's my main goal. I might be starting a jam piece at Baltimore. You guys don't have jam pieces, do you? You only just have straight commissions, right? What would you do a jam piece of? Probably an X-Men kind of thing where everyone who's worked on a, not to say a solo book or a team book, do something like that. Beyond. Why do you say that defeated? Because there's some limited variety when it comes to him. Really big names or like really not findable names because they worked in the 90s. His older issues like that were based off the show. Can't find anyone that actually worked in the book you get the voice actors we can't find the people that worked on that book yeah brian starfleet uses that baltimore <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, it's fine you can laugh because there's more that you're gonna carry he was one of the coolest people i met at last year's baltimore he's the one who signed over all four of the riveras as one big signature oh right right yeah okay. so yeah he did the last couple issues of batman beyond in the original run doesn't have to be creators that have worked on the titles that you want i might be doing a thunder agents jam piece and of all the artists who've ever done thunder agents i've got one in mind to do one of the characters and then it's just going to be other artists that i enjoy or artists that i find to try to finish out the jam piece they are the big thing that has kind of taken off in the last two years and they're really exciting and they're a really fun thing to do at cons and for those of you who aren't aware what we're referring to is you either take a sketch cover and you divide it up into like even squares or you get one person to do a full figure and another person to do another full figure next to them and then so on and so forth until the piece is full yeah that's my plan is to do a thunder ages one possibly jerry ordway is going to be a baltimore and i did not know this until the other day and it blew my goddamn mind his real name is not jerry it's jeremiah what yeah spelled the same way too so i'm gonna try to use that as a way to be like hey do you want to draw me a picture <laughs> i'll call you jerry <laughs> 
and like Walt Simonson will always do a sketch for you if you're super nice and spend forty five dollars towards a hero initiative, which that's another plan for that. I want to get a, like a little remark from him, hopefully for forty five dollars. Always donate to the hero initiative when you can. I have a new idea for Jam Piece. Oh boy, did you see that one? Oh yeah, that was Mahmoud Azrar who did X Men Red. That was Jean Grey's team. I have a sketch cover. And if I can get him to do a Jean Grey, like half, and I can get Stephanie Hans to do a Storm. This is like a dream, but I thought of a minute ago. That would be cool. That's what I would like. That'd be dope. I have two rumors. Let's debunk these two rumors real quick. What do you mean debunk? I didn't even start them. You can't read them ahead of time and shit on them before I go, get Go them. ahead. Go ahead. Henry Cavill in Loki season two was an unknown character. Who would he play? Who mm -hmm. I'd want him to play would be Hyperion. Makes no sense for him to be in Loki. Or Wonder Man. There is speculation on Wonder Man. Oh, God. Yep. Wonder Man. We were told that Ben Kingsley is reprising his role as Trevor Slattery in the Wonder Man. Henry Golding. I think he'd be a great actor for it. I have seen him in Snake Eyes in G.I. Joe Origins. He was in Crazy Rich Asians, which was a really good movie. He was in The Gentleman. That's the movie I saw him in that he was really good at. Mm -hmm. yeah. not one Man. He'd have to be a villain or he'd be like a new time variant version of someone or just like an agent for the time variant associate. If it's Henry Cavill, if you're getting him, I use this word very lightly, but if you're going to waste him mm -hmm. in the Loki show, right. it's got to be something good that can branch off into something else. Aries. Yep. I'd be cool with that. Yep. Henry Cavill is Aries. Yes, please. Yes. That makes sense. And Loki? It does. It does. Kind of. Sure. Please make that a thing. Henry Cavill as Ares. But if we get Ares, I want Phobos. But that's me. There's a lot of people speculating on who will play Wonder Man. Henry Golding is a front runner that everyone's speculating on. But the other list is Nathan Fillion, Bruce Campbell, Anthony Starr, Luke Evans, Brandon Roth, Jensen Ackles, James Marston, Evan Peters, or John Hamm. And my argument is have them all play Wonder Man as different variants. And then like the one douchiest <laughs> one comes <laughs> forward. I think that'd be a great use of all of them. I think some of them are too expensive to be Wonder Man and they're going to want seven movies kind True, of thing. Yeah. True, yeah. It's right. not getting seven movies. Well, that was fun. So yeah, how about, you know, uh, Panelized Podcast? Panelized yeah. Podcast! Panelized Podcast. Did you just shove in your mouth? Chicken sandwich. Was that your Pierre move eating? Yeah. Yes, okay. that was my Pierre move. That makes sense. Yeah. Like us. We can also talk about Paper Girls and Sandman, but... I haven't watched any Sandman, and I didn't like Paper Girls that much, so... Yeah. Like us. These dogs today, when I tell you it smells like diarrhea, like the whole That's room. Leaky butt syndrome. One of my cats decided to piss on my gym clothes because she didn't like the smell of them. So. That's fair. I'm trying to improve it. <laughs> We've done it like seven fucking times. I thought we started. We gotta do the names in case someone for the first time listens, you know? I love when my mother sends me a picture of the TV screen and it's just the credits it's... rolling. She just says, great movie. <laughs> okay. What movie? I don't even want to know. I mean this with love. If I just heard your mother's voice, I would assume it was a scene from Jersey Shore because how Jersey her voice is. It makes people want to hurt themselves.